Hey guys, welcome back to Contextual Electronics. We're going to be doing a video here showing the parts of a PCB because this is kind of just baseline knowledge that we should have. Uh, we'll go over some examples and we'll go. Over, <laughs> I'm going to do some terrible drawings and try and explain how things hook together, and then we'll we'll uh, hopefully have a better understanding of how PCBs are put together and how we can use them, especially in Contextual Electronics as we move into the layout section. This is kind of pretty critical. Let's dive right in. Um, the main thing that we need to know, one, well, not the main thing, <laughs> one of the things we need to know is what PCBs are made of. And uh, the most common one you're going to see is going to be FR4, which is a type of fiberglass. And if you go to the wiki page for printed circuit boards, there's a, there's, you know, they list all the different types of fiberglass that are used. And, you know, there's different ones for different applications. There's flexible circuit boards made out of Kapton tape, that kind of thing. Uh, but the most common one that you're going to see and the ones that are going to be lowest cost and most available to to people getting started in electronics are going to be made out of FR4 and then copper and um, and these two things together allow you to have a uh, conductor which is the copper and then FR4 which is an insulator and then between the two you know if you have if you are trying to connect two lines together right and well <laughs> Let's say you have a component over here and a component over here, and this is copper, this is FR4 here, and this is copper, right? You're trying to connect this pad to here, and this is in a 2D, 2D plane, of course. Um, but if you're trying to connect these two together, well, basically, current's going to want to flow along the copper and then uh, from one point to another, and that effectively ends up being like a wire. Uh, uh, so that's, that's why you want to have conductor and insulator on the same uh, the same surface that really helps you out. Let's jump right into um, looking at an example. This is just off of Google Image Search. Uh, thank you to Apisys, Aspisys, <laughs> uh, for posting pictures. But we can kind of go over the different aspects here about uh, what we're looking at. So this this is a two-layer board. It looks like, um, and the reason I know that is just because of the amount of uh, copper planes versus uh, routed out areas here. Um, so, uh, board outline, you know, if you're in KiCad, which is what we're using for contextual electronics, your board outline is actually going to define your shape of your board here, and that's actually, they're going to cut that out with, uh, with a milling bit, which looks like a drill bit, but actually just kind of comes along and it, it basically cuts the outline there. Um, if we start talking about some of the, the features here, um, we see that there are uh, a lot of through holes. Um, and so, like, like here, this is kind of hard to see, but... Uh, this is this is, looks like a non-plated through hole. There might be plating on there, but uh, you know, you, a lot of times there will be non-plated through holes in order to have uh, mounting points. So in this case, this looks like a connector. You actually want to mount the the uh, you know maybe a metalized connector to the board without actually making an electrical connection. And then there's plated through holes here, which actually look like uh, these are. You can see the tiny little connection to the actual the plane there. And that, so you can see that little tiny connection there to the plane. So it looks like those are grounded. And you know, depending on if you want to ground uh, your the your mounting screws or anything like that, that is an option. Other features we have here. Uh, so we have a lot of through hole pads. So this looks like this is for some kind of mounting header here. Uh, so what th these are these look similar to actually to these plated through holes. And really, that's what they are. They're they're a an array of plated through holes that you then put through. Uh, through hole components through and you solder to and that basically makes that connection and then that connects to the, in this case this this trace here uh, if we look at this trace some more the trace actually connects to something called a via and a via allows you to jump from plane to plane we'll go over that in a little bit I'll try and draw in 3d and that'll be terrible uh, <laughs> and then uh, so we have traces we have vias and then we also have surface mount components here and surface mount components look like two large pads right so so this one is a capacitor here it has, uh, this is for a maybe a 1206 capacitor here basically you'd solder each side of the capacitor to the pads and that would make an electrical connection there and then that would end up connecting either to the ground plane or to uh, trace and a via ground planes uh, or just planes in general or sometimes also called copper pores uh, you can see the difference in color here so we have we have a lighter green and then we have a darker green the lighter green actually represents an area where there's actually still copper underneath this darker green means all of the copper has been etched away and it's because basically uh, the whoever made this board wanted to have the traces here uh, so basically there was no copper infill here this in this case the copper is uh, 
all the way across. You know, you can see it's it actually gets routed out by by this trace here. And so this is very common on two layer boards where you have certain areas that are are uh, complete or that have fill in with copper, and then other other areas that are not because basically how the algorithm goes, where some of the copper gets filled in, some of it doesn't. Uh, these these what these look like vias here. These are are likely connecting the the copper pore on the top side to a copper pore on the bottom side. And so each of these looks like a, a small connection point, basically connecting connecting the ground plane together. And this helps you to uh, this helps with thermal characteristics, but it also helps to maintain a uh, a low voltage potential across the board. So if this is a ground plane, then you have a similar one on the on the bottom side. All these copper connections here provide paths for you know tiny currents to basically normalize the voltage on each one uh, and, th and that's actually that is a good idea if you're if you're going to do a two layer board there other things we see here uh, so this white well I actually see it all over the place this white stuff around here that's called silk screen and that helps you to do things like uh, put your company name on there uh, or logos also outlines that's another thing you can do is outlines uh, especially helpful for things like this where it's a diode and you want to know which orientation it should go in or in this case if you want to do if you want to see how much of an area it'll take especially with like big connectors and stuff like that helps for assembly uh, helps maintain uh, assembly numbers and that kind of thing and so really uh, silk screen is a great tool in order to do that. Now if you want a, a slightly more uh, permanent change you can also do text inside the copper. This is actually you see this dark area is actually where the copper is etched away and then they put their name in the copper. And then overall this entire thing is actually called solder mask. The green is like a it's like a green paste. No not paste that's a bad word. Uh, it's like a green paint that basically goes over all of the board except for certain areas where it's in gold and basically what that does is that helps to insulate uh, you know copper from the air and so that helps uh, reduce corrosion because copper will react with oxygen and it also helps to protect it from uh, you know stray solder blobs and uh, you know if you're if you don't want to short the board out right so if this copper area this you know this is a big copper pore all along here this this uh, lighter green with the the connection points all the way through it well if if that is just exposed copper and then you come along with a live a live voltage somewhere else that will short to that board whereas if it's just touching the solder the solder mask it's going to actually uh, insulate that copper from whatever voltages are out there uh, there there is limits to that of course but you know in a practical context it's it's great for insulating against stray voltages and that kind of thing uh, like I mentioned, there are some points where the solder mask is relieved, um, and so like here, you see the on the pads anywhere that the gold is, that's actually because copper was exposed, and then the entire board goes through a plating process uh, to help reduce corrosion. That's why it's not like a, the orange that you're used to with copper. This is likely an enig process immersion, uh, uh, electroless nickel immersion gold, which is one of the plating processes that's out there. But uh, you can see that you know there there are some larger spots that are exposed and some parts that are not, and and that's all defined in different uh, layers of uh, CAD programs. So like KiCad has, you know, there, there's a solder mask layer uh, top and bottom, and basically you define where that solder mask gets relieved. <laughs> so let's go back and let's talk a little bit more about vias because uh, that can be a confusing point. Now I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna attempt to draw stuff. Uh, 3D here. We'll see how this goes. Okay. Oops. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Okay. So, um, like I mentioned before, you know, you might have a component pad over here and a component pad over here, and then you want to you want to connect these with a trace. So you def you define that in your CAD program, and and then basically, uh, you know, this this trace will connect electrically from this point to this point. Now what happens though if you want to connect to a what I'm going to draw is a dotted line pad on the bottom side. Well what you need to do is you need to uh, create a trace and then a via which looks like a hole and then from here you can you know have a secondary trace on the bottom side and then basically all of these points here, so this can, this point's connected to this point, connected to this point, uh, through this copper trace, and then a via. Now the the trace, the via itself is actually constructed by a drill bit coming in here and 
drill a bit. <laughs> it it uh, drills down. And then there's a secondary process that actually, uh, after the drills are made, that basically it, it uh, plates the inside of the via. And so what this ends up looking like is basically like a copper tube or pellet. And basically, there's copper along the outside of the drill. And then uh, you connect... You connect to this outside, uh, this outside part of your your via, and that travels down the wall of the via, right? Because that's all copper now. And then again, you have a connection from the bottom side trace to the via, and basically that's how you actually make the electrical connection. So in the actual processing, you have a drill that comes down, it uh, cuts out all the vias, and then you plate them. And the plating process is actually what makes that electrical connection from a trace to another trace. Okay, so that's uh, one side of things. Let's talk about the actual uh, process of making a PCB. Um, so what happens here? So you know we, we define we define a uh, a trace like this in a CAD program, but what actually happens is that th this entire surface is actually covered by copper at first. And what happens is you when when you send a, a file to the board house, right? So you say, oh, I want a trace right here. And they want a via here. The first thing they're going to do is make the trace. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to actually create a, uh, they're going to cover up certain parts of the board. In this case, this trace, they're going to cover it up with some kind of goop. And then what they're going to do is they're going to, they're going to take acid and they're going to etch every other bit of copper away. And so this was all filled with copper before, but now because this part's covered up and this part is not covered up, this part's going to get etched away and this part is going to stay. And then they wash off the that uh, that resist, and if you if you ever if you ever look up, uh, you know, etching your own boards with uh, inkjet printer, you can actually do this at home uh, with uh, I think it's Cooper chloride, which is a, a copper etchant. Um, but basically, you can you know that's basically a very similar process from from this to there. Now, if we start getting into multi-layer boards, you start to see I'm going to draw 2D here. So what they do is they start with the base layer. And what they do is they they do some etching, right? So maybe they leave a trace here. That's a 2D trace. And then what they do is then they they lay another layer on top of that. And let's also say they they did a trace down here as well. And maybe a trace over here. And then they lay a, a layer on top and bottom. And now you have a four layer board, right? One, two, three, four. And now if you want to do a via, what you do is you drill, drill down through the board, right? And then maybe you have a new trace up top here, and then a new trace down bottom here. And then basically you then you do your plating process. And you plate the, the sides of your tunnel there. And all these are connected. And now you have one, two, three, four layers all connected to the same via. Now you don't have to, right? You could have a, a secondary you could have a non plated through hole over here, right? And this might just be for putting in a screw, right? You might have a screw over here that you want to insert. Uh, or something like that. Uh <clears throat> But but basically, because you have multi layers here, you can now drill down through all the of all the layers. You can make your connection here, and these are all defined beforehand. But your connections are made now, and now all four of these layers are connected together. Now, similarly, you don't have to have all four layers connected, right? You might have another via here, here, right? And this is all plated again, and now you might just have connected on two layers, right? So from layer two to layer four, now only those are connected. And so what you can see here is that in this 2D drawing, it, it's starting to get pretty pretty crowded here. And and that actually is a is a real concern. I mean, it can get pretty crowded in, the, uh, in there, right? So if you look at vias here, I mean, this is showing that these are pretty close together. They can get closer, but uh, usually you'll start to have uh, limits on what board houses will do without you know charging you extra and so um, you know that was this is just a 2d drawing it's very uh, small and close together but um, that is another way of doing it now another thing that we can it's kinda hard to show with with a 2d of course but 
uh, what you can do is say you have okay now these two are connected together actually three <coughs> now we can assume uh, that this is a copper pore right this entire layer maybe is a ground plane right so say this is this represents the ground plane here well now you can have the connection to the ground plane and that's great because then you can you can connect to a very wide swath of of copper that's that's all at the same potential uh, and again it's kind of tough with <laughs> maybe I can draw it here okay so if we go back to 2d or 3d rather okay 3d just like layers of cake Okay, and so what we'll have here is let's draw a four layer again. So one, two, three, four. So maybe now on the bottom side layer. Oh boy, here we go. 3D, 3D messiness. <laughs> okay. Uh, now on the bottom side layer, maybe you have an entire, the entire second uh, second layer here is actually all copper right so it's all copper and basically now when you make a via here right, that goes down through the plane you can connect it at the second layer and now anything that connects to this plane or to this via rather is going to be at the same potential as this second layer which is all filled in with copper so maybe this is your ground plane and you want to make you have a, a capacitor here and you want your capacitor to be to Okay, starting to get messy here. Uh, you want your capacitor to decouple to a ground plane. Well, it can make this connection here, and then it flows down to the ground plane. And now this side of your capacitor is at the same potential as your entire ground plane down here. So, uh, <laughs> my bad drawing aside, um, you know, PCBs are a uh, a very very useful thing for for making large scale electrical systems. Um, you know, you can you can really create a, a wide swath of, of different types of systems. I highly, highly recommend you try out maybe uh, KiCad is one of my favorites. Uh, KiCad is how how Contextual Electronics does it, but uh, you know you can you can use this software. It's open source in order to uh, design design the different layers that you want to, and then go off and send them out and, and get a PCB made for you. Thanks for watching.